Trollord Games, join the fray. Trollord Games, join the fray. I don't do that as good as Chuck does. But there you go, here we are. For another Ask Me Anything. And I forgot to put this up anywhere on my social media. Hopefully Tim and Chuck took care of the other side of things. Uh, there you go. Here we are. I assume that we're live and everybody can hear me. <laughs> All right. What in the Sam Hill? There you go. How's it going, Kandora? Man, I was watching that... Uh, I don't think I ever actually saw the whole movie. Hey, hey, Commander Pete, how's it going? I was watching the... Uh, yeah, I did, yeah, I did. The, the movie between Godzilla and King Kong. I watched a clip of it last night. The, the fight in the water on the aircraft carriers and whatnot. You know, I'm... I'm... Uh, I, I'm, a, I'm impressed with our super carriers, with the super carriers the United States has. But I'm uh, not sure one can hold up Godzilla and King Kong at the same time. <laughs> but it looks badass. <laughs> so, so I'll go with it. <laughs> How are y'all doing today? It is Dr. Pepper time, Sparky. It's also hot in this office. I don't know what the hell is going on. I think if I turn a fan on... Uh, you guys get this low hum in the background. I'm not sure what's happening. But there you go. So here we are to talk about anything Troll Lord or Kickstarter related or industry related or hobby related or what have you. Uh, I've had my head buried in the uh, Adventure Spell Book this past few days. It went to the printers today. Uh, covers. I got the last little tweak to do on a cover and it will go here right after the stream. Uh, and then that book's off my desk, and we go on to uh, Book of Names was just laid out for the NPC Almanac. Book of Names laid out. Bergman. We'll go to editing, and then uh, then we're gonna drop the art, and then the NPC Almanac, and we're rolling. What you are doing your amazing adventures game tonight, Sparky? That's what all we want to know about. What can we throw more money at TLG? <laughs> well, that's always fun. But it's a, it's, a, it's a lot of content, and I think it's a lot of good content. Uh, and it, we're finally, I feel as if we're finally kind of getting a handle on its presentation uh, and making, making the amount of material a little bit more accessible. It was nice that Facebook shut down to eliminate any distractions while you got that book sorted right. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I welcomed Facebook's just demise. I'm <laughs> not a huge... I enjoy Facebook. I enjoy talking to people over there. I really like the Castles and Crusades you know, club thing, whatever we got, some of the other things I belong to, but um, Facebook is one of those uh, social media, I think, that I just don't trust Zuckerberg, I suppose, at the end of the day, I don't know, I don't know that I trust any of the social media owners, but uh, what can you do, uh, what can you do, having a great day, Steve, just finished a three-hour Viking melee in my garage with three best friends, used the free Raven Feast rules in 28 millimeters, very cool, that is very cool. That reminds me of the old SPI game called Vikings. A fantastic, absolutely fantastic game. A little chip-based game, of course, where you just did Viking battles between you had axemen and swordsmen, spearmen, a few, very few horses. Uh, it was just a really badass, very simple, a lot of fun little game to play. Yep, girlfriend's back from Vegas where I, I rolled her a mentalist to test drive. Should be interesting. Very cool. That'll liven up your amazing adventures game. How's it going, Lord Gazuma? Absolutely loved. Uh, you're, you're mighty welcome, and thank you for having us. I loved going over there and hanging out. I had a lot of fun. Sparky was in the game, a, a bunch of folks. Uh, it was just a lot of fun, and the GMTT afterwards was very, very informative. Uh, that was very cool. I got as much out of that, I think, uh, maybe even more than, than I spread. So, uh, uh, very cool. For all, the, all those aren't familiar, uh, Virtual Gary, nope, do it every time. Virtual Greyhawk Con 2 just closed out last Sunday. Uh, if you didn't get a chance to view it or join it, uh, definitely check out. Uh, keep keep in tab with Lord Zumba and over here and all over the place, and you can find out for next year's and definitely dive in. Lots and lots of fun. Yep, Gary Con is next for us. Uh, we're not going to game halls, so and Gary Con is the next big one, I think. Though Chuck and I have begun working on a gathering of crusaders that we hope to, to, to bring about relatively soon. How's it going, Great Bear? I had the Renaissance Infantry title from from SPI. 
the game system one of my first war games circa 1974 very cool yeah those were just cool fun very simple easy to play games uh, and they didn't take very long you know a couple of hours this Vikings thing and you and you're done you could you go on to do whatever some of the other ones got extraordinarily involved and could last days without counting. but um I gotta get out of But it was it was cool. I moved my office around a little bit. My record player went over there, and my drink thing went over there. Uh, and now I can zoom around in my chair and never have to get up. And that's Steve Rose in the game. It was fun. That was a lot of fun. Very very fun. Uh, very very cool. You going to Gary Con in person? Uh, yes, we, me and Tim uh, and Chuck, I believe, are all going to be there. I'm not sure who else. Probably Dakota will be there again this year. Uh, and my son Pete will probably do it too, but I'm not sure about Davis or other trolls. And we're going to try to roust Tyler Morrison, for those of you who remember, and try to roust Tyler out and get him to go with us. Oh my god. That is so good. That is so good. Good god. Everything's hot. I'm just hot. It's too hot. I'm just going to complain. Alright, well there you go. So, um... So it's very interesting. We've wrapped up three of the five Kickstarters that we were behind on. We've got two more to go. One of both of which are almost all done. The, and uh, the Player's Handbook Kickstarter is, will be as of six o'clock tonight, all at the printers and gone. Uh, so it's it's very nice having that off the deck, and, and then we can start focusing on what's coming, which will be a lot of fun. It is a bit warm. It was nice and cool earlier. Now it's black. Yeah, I'm a, I think I think I turned the air conditioner up so it's turned off. So I got no air blowing in here, and it's okay when I got a fan going. But I turned the fan off for the stream. I got one of these. I don't know if y'all can see it. Yeah. So that that is a fan circa 1970 something, I guess 1950. I don't know. But it blows air down and around. But it's kind of loud. I don't trust leaving it. Can you hear that? Is that disturbing? It's, oh, it feels so good. Oh my God, that feels good. I don't leave it plugged up because it's so old and I don't trust it. <laughs> it's wiring to not, not burn, the, burn the place to the ground. So, But it's a great little fan. I'm, I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to, to merge the old, uh, the good from the old world with the good from the world, the, the new world and find that, you know, that equilibrium that we all that we all want to, <laughs> to, to find in something. Audible but wouldn't overwhelm your microphone. Well, I'm gonna turn it on and if it if it gets disturbing, let me know and I can turn it off. It just gets air circulating. Which is a good thing. If it sparks and blows up, you all get to see the place burn to the ground. So <laughs> we'll just leave the stream running as everything burns down. <laughs> Make it entertaining at least. Yeah. Just have to be a chance to start over and have to grab the hard drive and run. I'm also very fond of the sound of the fan. I'll even when I go to conventions like GaryCon, I'll I put the phone, if I don't have a fan with me, I'll put the phone on and go to YouTube and choose a 10 hour video of a fan playing and just play a fan in the background. How's it going, Seneca? Uh, that'll be quite a tale. There I was when Steve Trump burned his office down. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, white noise is absolutely wonderful. Uh, you know, I don't... Is it... T not tetanus. <laughs> tinnitus? Tinnitus? I don't have tinnitus. I think my brother does, but... Uh, uh, even even the silence, when you're just sitting in a complete and total silence, it can be a little bit oppressive. Uh, because you start... Just, I don't know. It just sounds everywhere. So a little white noise kind of drowns all that out. It's a good thing. And this ancient refrigerator I have kicks on and is loud enough so uh, with his wheezing whining as it <laughs> as it manages to keep itself alive but there you go but we are here for Ask Me Anything if you have any questions about troll word business or what I'm up to or what projects we're working on or whatever it is uh, throw them up in the feed and we'll we'll do our best to, to hash through them uh, otherwise, we'll probably end up talking about movies and TV and whatever else that interests us. I got popped up on my... Uh, did you see the new show, The Squid, yet? You know, I saw the advertisement for that today during lunch. I was sitting there eating a hamburger, uh, and I was about to watch... I went to Hulu, I guess, to watch something. I don't know what the hell I was watching. 
um, oh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia, and that advertisement popped up. Is it good? It looked odd. I didn't know if it was quite my uh, my cup of tea, but I do like strange and odd things. Um, so there's that. What will be the next? What will the what will be the next big Kickstarter? So the one we're working we're working on two projects right now. One is revamping the A series, both for fifth edition and C and C. I want to get it brought up to speed with the Fantasy Grounds and Shard and other VTT. So we're and we're doing new art for the whole book and new maps for the whole book for all thirteen adventures. So the A series, uh, long overdue for being overhauled, uh, is going to get that. Uh, so that's that's one of the Kickstarters we're looking at, and then the, the next. But I want to get I want to get most of it done before we launch, so it's not sitting in the in the ether forever. Now, and then the second one, and I talked to Davis about this today, uh, is back to the Planescapes, and he and I need to sit down. We've been trying to do this for about two weeks, uh, but I got to get these other things done. Um, and, and give us both some direction on what we're going to do on the Planescapes. With uh, Gods and Legends out, that's kind of the cornerstone, the launch pad of that whole milieu of books. Uh, and the Planescapes books is part of the, is, a, is really the, the centerpiece of that. Uh, and that's going to be the next one, I think. And then we're going to do, like, Spokes on a Wheel. We're going to throw out to Inzea and Aird and, uh, and, and other various and sundry books to, to tackle beyond the material plane stuff. So Planescapes is the next one. Uh, Peter's hard at work on, on the cover. We'll probably have an alternate cover for that one done as well. Uh, have Jason do a you know throwback cover or tribute cover. But uh, so that, those, those are the next two big projects, absolutely big projects. And for me personally, I will, I will dive into, I've sort of outlined it, but I haven't had a chance to do it. I, I'll dive into the novella for Yurik Gunshoff, uh, but I don't, I don't think we're gonna kickstart that one. And then lastly, we, we will be re-releasing a no, we will be releasing a new set of CNC screens relatively soon, probably the next within the next month. These are it's a local printer, not local to me, local to a printer here in the United States. Uh, and we're going to go back to the old um, heavy stock laminate uh, and give those a shot, as opposed to the thick board, and see where we land. We got a we got a good printer. The quality is really good. We're going to do the a free cover from the CKG and the new player's handbook cover on the front, uh, and I've redone the interior of that, finished that yesterday, and we'll get that to the printers probably today, or in, well, no, today's over, isn't it? tomorrow. So we've got we've got all kinds of stuff rolling out very, very soon. Are you still getting uh, files for Memorial Tomb? I don't recall seeing an update for a couple of weeks. We have, he's not missed. I actually haven't checked Facebook this week. Um, it was down yesterday. Uh, let me check real quick. He has been, he hasn't missed a deadline yet. Well the revised deadline. <laughs> I know he's missed many of his own deadlines. Uh, ah, Facebook's taking forever to load. Yep, there we are. Yes, absolutely. So he has put chapter four of the Underworld expansion into the Dropbox. So he is, he's on target. I think he's got one more chapter and then the appendixes and then he's done. And then we, we've already sent this to editing. Well, we sent, there's going to be three more books. So we've sent the first two books to editing, so that should be done very, very soon. Uh, well, I don't know if he's done so, but anyways, yeah, so he's, he's on spot. I haven't done an update. Uh, I thought Tim had done it, but um, he probably thought I did it, so, <laughs> so there you go. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking at hopefully closing that one out, and with the release of Gods and Legends, we've been shipping that to the backers that, that purchased it way back when, with the sixth, seventh printing of the Player's Handbook. So we're closing that out. We're closing all of these old tickets out, which will be very good, and I really want them all closed out before we really plunge into whatever we're doing next. And that's going to include the Memorial Tomb because we stepped up to, to help out that and I want to get it done done and off the desk. Any update on Fantasy Grounds Unity Rules release and the release of Adventures Backpack? Not yet, Doctor. Uh, so I talked to Chuck very briefly. Uh, he is in his new house. He has internet. He has recovered from the COVID. Uh, and he is mostly moved in. He's doing today some kind of real estate mess. Uh, and then I'm hoping by tomorrow he's back on deck and he have he and I have a laundry list of things to go through and Top of that list is the fantasy grounds unity release. I know it's finished uh, We just need to get it to figure out what's happening with Fantasy grounds themselves and make sure that they've got the compatible software and all that BS uh, To make sure it all lines up. So that's coming very soon And once we figured all that out, then we'll then we'll have a gander at the adventures backpack are you adding VTD assets for the adventures? Absolutely. So the idea is going forward with both the C-Series we're doing, 
independently, but the A series we're probably going to kickstart it because I want it to be a big hardback book uh, with maps, tokens. Uh, all of the maps inside will be both printable and usable in a PDF and usable on VTT. We fired a new mapper and he's already begun on that. I think he's working. I think he's done with A zero already. So yeah, we're going to bring the whole shebang up. Uh, in one fell swoop and bring so that'll bring in a C series that's being done to the C series already, and this will bring the A series up to speed, which will just be a lot of fun. Uh, and and really, I'm hoping I don't know if it'll be I'm not sure when it'll be. I'll have to get a good. I really need to sit down and talk to the artists. And that's going to be the hold up there and see where see if we can't kind of move everything forward, which I think we should be able to do. Uh, let's see. So, uh, any estimates on when the player's handbook and spellbook will be on the store? So, the we have approved all the proofs on the player's handbook. There's a there's a snag on the leather, uh, so I'm not sure what that is. I got to get into that. It's something about 100% black. I can't do that, so I have to pitch that to either uh, Peter. Well, that'll have to go to Peter Bradley. That's that's his that's his forte. Uh, his Photoshop. So once that's fixed, and the, the player's handbook will be printed. Uh, Adventure Spellbook is there now, so I'm hoping within three weeks, maximally four weeks, we should have all these books back and in here, and we begin shipping them. And as soon as we begin shipping them, we release them to stores uh, so that a couple of weeks after we ship, they'll they'll be available in stores. That is the plan. So I'm hoping everything by Thanksgiving is out. On shelves, screens, players' handbooks, CKGs, the monsters, the new monsters and treasure will be here, all of it. That is the plan. Uh, so it's all here by Black Friday, I suppose. Uh, let's see, Monsters and Treasures with Tribute Cover. That is, uh, that's already been, uh, it's been reskinned. So they sent me, what they, they had a question that I missed, and I, I answered that Friday. So I'm guessing they're probably binding it this week. I'm hoping it ships next week or the week after. So that one should be landing very soon. I'm super stoked on that one. That one just looks, man, did that turn out. I was really nervous when Jason took that task on because I didn't, I never really cared for that cover with the AD&D books, you know, with the, the Manticore and all of that stuff. It just looked kind of hokey. I know what the artist was doing, and that's great, but um, Jason really did. He knocked it out of the park. It looks fantastic. I'm super I'm super stoked on it, so it should be here soon. When will Gods and Legends be released to the non-Kickstarter folks? Any day now. I meant to do it yesterday, to be honest with you, but the spell book caught me up uh, probably Thursday, I'm thinking. Uh, we've got it all ready to go. It just needs to be turned on, um, and then we'll roll a... Uh, do the newsletter out, put all the, the words up, blah, 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 and, and everyone will know. All right, there you go. Uh, so very, very soon. Thanks, got my gods and legends yesterday. Still waiting to dive Very cool. Hope you enjoy it. Uh, I, I love a lot of the content. It is great, but I think the art just knocks it through the part, too. Zoe and Peter just did some badass pieces in there. World building question. Do you do you just concentrate on the known lands of Arid for development, or have you mapped out some surrounding lands that interact with your core lands? How far field do you design even loosely that can be a lot of work? It's a huge amount of work. Uh, and I have, I have designed a little bit, well, I don't have a world map up there, but on the main continent, if you go all the way to the left, to the east, I've designed a little bit on that very, I think it's uh, Icom's Horn, I've designed a little bit there. All the way to the west, a little bit there. Um, and then the, uh, the Dwarven Isles uh, in the middle. And the moral, I think, is probably about it. And then everything else is kind of episodic, and it's just it's just bits and pieces that really you could drop almost anywhere. You know what I mean? Uh, we've done some adventuring in and around. I can't remember the name of the mountains now. The Marmoreal Mountains, the something mountains to the far west, uh, but not a lot. I don't get much out of Ursul. What I'm trying to do is is kind of push the boundaries out and get at least. Uh, a, a greater idea of what's out there, at least an outline. But part of why I don't do that is I really want players to be able, if you want to do your own thing, you know, you can carve out this piece of the world and do your own thing. Uh, and you don't really have to worry about the lands of Ursul. Uh, you can just you can just create your own world and drop it in there and move on. I tie it to amazing adventures and everything else. Uh, so I don't do too much M5, but uh, I do uh, just a little bit. Probably a little enough to get my interest. Good news, I've got a $25 TLG store gift certificate burning a hole in my pocket. Needs some PHP <laughs> and, and spellbook. Sweet! Hey, guys, and Legends is on your store website. I just ordered a print and digital. Well, there you go! <laughs> Apparently, it's been. <laughs> Apparently, it's live! Well, there you go. That's all right. Good deal. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, we're doing some kind of $20 raffle today, so. Uh, <clears throat> I think I'll read, I guess it's open, so go ahead and hit your raffle in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> News to me and Tim. Uh, well, there you go, Tim. 
We fooled ourselves. See, we were working so industriously, we got ahead of our own schedule. That's the troll way. <laughs> yeah, that's not the troll way. That's the wannabe troll way. Yeah, that's the yeah, yeah. <laughs> troll way. Uh, whatever. <laughs> whatever. I, I love the book. It turned out beautifully. Uh, even though the guy had a little smidgen of an issue with the cover, but uh, yeah, otherwise, the book is fantastic looking. I mean, it's just really a, a gorgeous looking book. Uh, and it fits in nicely with the Mythos series, uh, which is just cool. That's very, very cool. Uh, all right, there you go. Um, yeah. Uh, what else we got? What else we got cooking? I really need to respond to Benoit and let him know. Let me just say that real quick. That is fantastic. Yep, he's hacking away at the, at the Memorial Tomb. It'd be nice to ship that thing too. Not least of which because it's taking up a huge chunk of my warehouse. <laughs> Not a huge, but a whole stack. Which is really where the player's handbook needs to go. Because that son of a bitch is going to arrive. They have this habit of, they're supposed to call when they ship. And this is usually, it ranges up to five pallets of books. Uh, and and they don't, I think they've called like once. So we get a call from, you know, down at the warehouse, hey, we got a truck in with all these pallets and everybody has to scramble and head down there. Uh, it's always fun. I can't wait for these books. The CKG is such a beautiful product. I didn't realize there was a new monster book coming. I guess I'll have two printings of that now. <laughs> yeah, it's the same monster book, different cover. We had a whole lot of folks asking for a tribute cover that would, you know, go hand in hand with the player's handbook and go hand in hand with CKG. Um, and I, I shouted at Jason, and he cranked one off insanely fast, and it is absolutely beautiful. So we rolled it out, uh, talked to the printers, and got that all squared away. So same book, different cover. So you know, if you want to get it, absolutely, but uh, don't, <laughs> don't feel like you have to. Uh, yeah, I'm super, I'm super, super excited about the CKG. Very happy with it. Already been just tearing it to pieces. Do you have a link to see a picture of the M&T tribute cover? Uh, no, we did. Let me see what we can do. You know what? I'll bet you I got Photoshop open. I think. Let me, do that. Uh, let me just let me just throw it up on the blog. That'll be easier. That'll be easier. Let's see, sign it. it makes me sign in every time. I really don't know. So we will call this M and T tribute cover. And you got to check out Tim's uh, Tim's latest blog title. It's absolutely hilarious. Uh, let's see, insert image. Do like that, that, that. I'm just narrating for you guys, so there's not like dead air. Uh, you can kind of follow my thought process as I wander through these hosts of troll. So this is going to be in concept files because it's not finished. Monsters and Treasures six. All right, so there's an updated one. I gotta be careful. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I believe that's it. Drop that guy. The first time I posted it, the purple worm had no eyes. Uh, but now. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Boom. Bada boom. Let me get the blog. It's up. I stopped as soon as I said I was narrating, and I just stopped narrating. Boom, boom. I'm guessing it will let me post something in here. There you go. Hit that link there, Troll Lord Games blog spot, and uh, you should be good to go. You should be able to see it. Uh, it's at the top of the page. How's it going, Epi? Hope you're having a, a good week. Uh, we just uh, were talking about the Monsters and Treasures tribute cover. Uh, I just posted it uh, up on the blog so everybody can check it out. Good question. Matt, you guys ever think about having a troll convention here in Little Rock? We actually, uh, we frequently think about it. Uh, one of them, we're fixing to do some online gathering, but uh, I, I would love to do a troll con. It takes a huge amount of work, uh, and i got to find someone who's, who's interested in diving into it, and I've got to carve out enough time for myself to answer lots of questions and help, you know, whenever, whatever it needs. Uh, I've had a few people, Jennifer Martin, a few people have kind of reached out. Uh, we'll see where that lands. Yeah, he did, that cover is just, he, he just did an amazing job. Um, the spider in the tree, there's so many details, and that's one of the things I love about Jason's work. Uh, you just, you keep looking at it, and just more and more details, they just keep popping out. 
Uh, I absolutely love that type of stuff. When you when you're when you're looking at something and you keep finding more and more. You know, I didn't see that before. You know that type of thing. Damn, top of my head's hot. I don't know what's going on. It's too hot. It's just too hot. Man, crikey, that two girls. Yeah, it really turned out beautiful. Yeah, I, I would let Jason know that everybody is loving on it. I'd love to attend Trollcon or a booth at Comic Con next year. Give me a reason to actually go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, that would be cool. We've done three or four down here, I think. Um, had Larry Elmore in as a guest once. Ernie Guy Dax, we've, we've done a few guests. A uh, few big, few small. Uh, but it'd be nice to do it again. Uh, and I have to say, uh, uh, I'm actually kind of, uh, I'm kind of missing the, the convention circuit. Yeah, you see, you see that, Matt Berenger? <laughs> or you see that Blood Wild in the very, very background? Beneath the moon, a tarasque. Yeah, that was a badass uh, addition there. Just very cool. <laughs> Just very cool. Well, if you ever get that far, I'll volunteer to help. And that, that would be awesome for the industry and the state. Yeah, it would be, it would be very cool. Uh, and I'd like it to be a really official troll lord thing and not something that, you know, we've done some where we're kind of, we're guests and we're visiting and whatnot. At, uh, what is it? RockCon? Was it RockCon? Uh, but but I'd like it to be an official troll lord event that's, that's put on and, and do it properly. I like uh, Gary Con or Game Wolf Con or whatever, and uh, as everybody gathers, do it both virtual and uh, physical, and let people come in and game, you know, and come in game and hang out and do the deal. And that'd be cool. We'll take whatever volunteers we can get. Uh, you know, we used to have I can't remember McBain. Richard McBain did it for a while. Did a great job at it. Um, he'd probably be interested in doing it again. To be honest with you, I need to reach out to him. I haven't talked to him in a few months. He stopped by and we had lunch not too long ago. And, you know, everybody's lives get caught up and taken away. <laughs> there you go, Buffer. Uh, yeah, we need to get Chuck back on deck too. He could he could help dive into this. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's got a, a greater attention to that type of detail than Tim and I do. Conventions aren't setting up conventions. Uh, entertainment venue is really not our cup of tea. But uh, Chuck's, Chuck's good at it. I need to get him back on deck. Hopefully by tomorrow. Uh, let's see, what are we doing here? All right, getting a lot of memes in the Skype today. <laughs> I guess the day is winding down. I'd volunteer for Troll Con if you, if you have Tim running up here in Maine. There you go. Now that would be cool. Um, we went to a couple of conventions up in Portland. They were anime kids conventions primarily, but a lot of fun. Really, really enjoyed it. Um, I really enjoyed it. Any, just about any aspect of our hobby uh, I have found over the years that I enjoy. Just about any aspect. Of it. There's probably a few. Hey, now here's something new. I never, so when, when uh, Star Trek, it's not really new, when Star Trek The Next Generation came out in 87, 88, I was in college. I had zero dollars, and the only television that I had was it was a dial TV, you know, a, a, I got it out of a dump somewhere, <laughs> a dial TV with a little, you know, little dials on it, and a Betamax attached to it. I didn't even have a VHS. For those of you <laughs> a little bit older, you you probably remember the Betamax, the little bitty cassette tapes with movies, and maybe 10 or 12 of my dad's tapes, God knows what they were, I can't remember anymore, TV shit that we had taped. Um, so I didn't get to watch it, I didn't watch The Next Generation. And then after that, I moved. I moved into my parents' house as they moved out while they were selling it, and I still didn't have a TV then. I didn't want to pay for cable or anything like that, so I still didn't have a TV. And then I joined the army. Uh, get out of the army in '93, and then I moved to Fayetteville and went to graduate school. And I still don't think I had a TV. But anyway, for almost the entire run of Star Trek: The Next Generation, I didn't have access to a television regularly, so I never saw it. I have actually never watched, up until now, an episode of The Next Generation. And I sit there the other night, I finished whatever the hell I was watching. I don't know what it was. Um, and um, The Next Generation popped up, and I thought, you know what, I think I'll give this a shot. So I, I watched the first episode. I think I'm in episode three now. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I'm not a huge Star Trek, or even a huge Star Wars fan. I love the franchise as a huge Captain Kirk fan. Um, but... Um, but it was, it was pretty cool. I enjoyed it. It was pretty cool. Encounter at Farpoint. Yes, the only thing that uh, that was 
disconcerting is I, I was watching it. I didn't I didn't pay any attention. I just thought it was episode one, season one, episode one. So I'm sitting there watching it, and it goes on and on and on, and I thought, oh my god, this is the longest 45-minute show I have ever seen. And after, (laughs) I thought it was some kind of weird time warp, and (laughs) finally I I clicked the pause button, I thought, holy shit, this thing's two hours long. (laughs) So so what I thought was kind of a drag was actually kind of cool uh, that it was such such a long episode. Yeah, I don't know, it's it's, uh, probably, it's clearly they're getting... They're getting their sea legs by season by episode three and four because they're they're loosening up. Everything is very stiff in that first episode. Uh, Wesley's character is interesting. I don't normally like children in shows unless that child has a real role to play. Uh, but I think Will Wheaton, I think he carried it all. I think he's doing pretty good. He seems much taller in this show. You know, I've met Mr. Wheaton a couple of times at Gen Con. He seems much taller at the show than he did than he did in real life. It's very weird. <laughs> it's very weird. Because uh, it may be the only other actors <laughs> just, you know, just short, but it, it was fun. I'll probably continue. I'll probably continue a weeding through it. That first season or two could be skipped, so it gets better as they go. Most shows mature a little bit, kind of get their sea legs as they as they tumble along. The first season was okay, but it continually improved over the course of the run. That's good to hear. Uh, and I like the characters. I mean, the characters are cool. Uh, there's none of them that. There's no like whiny characters or anything, you know, anything like that. Because I don't, I don't really care for that type of pitch on a character. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It seems pretty cool. Probably my only real complaint on Star Trek, and this is almost all Star Treks, every series, um, and all of the movies are the uniforms. I just don't like the uniforms. I don't know why they're kind of almost like leotards. Yeah, there's one, I think one of the movies where they had like turtlenecks maybe. I thought those were really cool. But the uniforms are all, overall, I'm not real. The shirts always seem kind of short. The sleeves short. I think that was a 1960s style when they started it. But uh, uh, beyond that, uh, the show is very enjoyable. Uh, Darmok and Jala Tan- Tanagra. When you hit that episode, you'll get it. All right. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that, Big Danger. What are your thoughts on Expedition to the Buried Peaks with Star Siege and the upcoming Planescape Fruits? Any plan for a crashed spaceship in air? You know, David, that would be absolutely cool. I hadn't really thought about that. Man, I hadn't thought about Expedition Burger Pizza. That's S4, right? In a million years. We played that. God, we played that a long time ago in the big game, actually. Uh, wow, holy snipes. But as, as much of an X-Files, that's the, that's the show I've just finished. As much as, of, of an X-Files fan as I am, surely we're going to have to take a, space, a spaceship and crash it somewhere. Maybe do a whole... 1947 Roswell thing. Roswell is one of my favorite town towns in the entire United States. Uh, I absolutely love that town. Uh, so maybe we'll center something around Roswell and do that. That would be actually kind of cool. <laughs> I'll talk to Davis about it. He actually just finished up the intro adventure that will be the intro adventure for the, for the Planescape stuff. Um, uh, Tomb of the Unclean or some shit. He changed the name. but um, Yeah, so that... That this might be something interesting for him to dive into. I see the first season was fairly rough, but it got better as it went along. Third season had some very good stuff and kept improving. Oh, that's good to hear. Yeah, we'll 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 muscle through it. Uh, I can take uh, I can take bad TV. I really can. I don't even if it's I don't know. Just as long as it's consistent or something. As long as it's not whiny, I really just can't do whiny television. If there's characters in it that are whiny, I'll almost always turn it off. And if they do too much weird, real world shit, I'll turn it off. Cause I don't, I don't care about real world shit. <laughs> I'm living it. Wesley sucked. Though Will Wheaton, it did a good job with the role. Uh, he's an interesting character. I, I will say this, and I've only seen three episodes, but he did not the character. Now forget Mr. Wheaton. Wheaton is a fine actor, but um, the character did not immediately piss me off. Like I don't know which you guys are gonna know which one this is. There was a Battlestar Galactica series that. Um, that's what they had. They had a kid like in the commander's role or some shit. I couldn't. I, I watched like half an episode way back in the seventies or eighties or whenever that was. Turned it off. Never looked back. I absolutely couldn't stand it. It's weird meeting people from shows, TVs, and cons. Yes, it's very weird. <laughs> it's very odd. Uh, uh, they, Mr. Wheaton did a, a really cool review of Castles and Crusades a few years back, um, and he's, he had some very nice complimentary things to say about the troll lord. So. So, Mr. Wheaton has always got a soft spot for me. Uh, the, or I've always got a soft spot for him. The first season was like, blah, blah, blah. Uh, what are your thoughts on the, on having Mark Zuckerberg on the bridge? That's an intro joke. 
What, what does Ripley say about androids? <laughs> she, she never trusted an android. Is that is that Ripley's line? Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> he, he is a bit. Of, <laughs> he's got a a demeanor about him that is peculiar. <laughs> let's let's put it that way. The constant pulling down on, of the shirts. Yeah, it's, the shirts are just too short. And I'm not a big fan of leotard stuff. I don't know why. And it's not leotards. I'm really overstating it. Um, the coloring is cool. You know, I kind of like the red and the black and, and the, the, the orange and the black and whatever. But uh, and the flared pants are kind of cool. I don't know. I don't know. The uniforms are hard. They're very hard to make soldiers or whatever you've got, Starfleet officers or whoever, to make them look cool uh, and functional and be practical. And I suspect that when they did the original series, they were trying to look forward to what people would be doing in the future, how they would be acting in the future. And it, it's all cyclic, so good God, a hundred years from now, everybody may be in top hats. You just don't know. I would be quite willing to drive the 19 hours from Winnipeg to Little Rock just to come to a troll con better than an expensive flight via Calgary and Atlanta. Oh yeah, I would much prefer driving. <laughs> and that would be badass. We really need to do it. We really need to look into this thing. Uh, let me see here. No, 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 no. Jason's asking me a question. Quick, blah, blah, blah. We are discussing when we're going to release Star Siege. Uh, it's done. It was released with the Starship Warden. Uh, so I, I'm kind of. He's wanting to get it out, and I'm thinking I'm. I think I'm wanting to join him. I was going to do a hardcover, but I think we're going to do a soft cover release here very soon and get that into circulation. What do you think of the new Space Command uniforms? You know, I saw it um, only briefly, so what has it got? It's, it has like a, a side vest, is that right? Um, they didn't look too bad. Uh, the emblem is just interesting to me. Um, let me see, is this... I know I saw that somewhere. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, it's kind of cool. The, the dress blues, I suppose. That's what I'm looking at now. I kind of like the side, the side button. It's kind of got an 18th century feel about it, doesn't it? Isn't that what the uh, old English and, and the naval officers did? Uh, <laughs> someone's got it stacked up next to us. The Empire from from Star Wars. That's funnier than shit. Uh, there's definitely a Star. <laughs> there's definitely a Star Trek, you know, influence in it. But that's all right. Uh, that's all right. Yeah, they're, they're pretty cool. They're all right. Uh, we'll, we'll see. Obviously, I, you know, I follow a lot of news. Um, and, and I know everyone likes to laugh about Space Force and whatnot, but we're going to need some military assets up there. Sooner rather than later. <laughs> I, can, I can promise you that. Uh, the Chinese and others are not, they're not playing, uh, and it's not a, it's not a funny ha-ha joke to them, <laughs> so, so almost definitely, but the uniforms are kind of cool, I kind of like them, I, see, I wish they hadn't done the blues, because the Air Force is, is blue, isn't it, well, I guess the Marines and, and Army have dress blues, too, I guess they all have dress blues, hell, I don't know, does the Navy have dress blues, they don't look like they fit properly from the press photo I saw into this guy's, <laughs> but this one I'm looking at looks okay, uh, this young lady's rather large-chested, so it's kind of pushing up, but I'm trying to get a good picture. Oh, here we go. Uh, eh, they should have done the buttons all the way down and it looked a little bit, a little bit cool. Uh, let's see, boxy. I think it was boxy. Yeah, it's a little boxy on the bottom. I do like the collars, though. The collars are pretty cool. Uh, I like that kind of new age or, or whatever they got going on here. Wait, no, is that Air Force? That says Air Force. Oh, no, Space Force. Okay. That's right, they've taken a lot of Air Force personnel and put them in the Space Force temporarily until they can fill the ranks. I believe that's what they've done. <clears throat> yeah, see, no Galactica 1980. That was the one. Yes, the Galact yes. I hate it. I absolutely, I couldn't stand it. I couldn't make it the first episode. Cousin Oliver in Space. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Uh, don't worry, Wesley, we'll don't piss you off soon enough since you don't like whining characters, though. <laughs> He's a good actor. Great. Fantastic. I really don't like whining characters. The kid was on the reboot. And on the reboot, he quickly got the boot. <laughs> Uh, let's see, tugged down on his tunic so much the cast started referring it to as the Picard Maneuver. <laughs> I'm going to assume that's true. You know, Battlestar was in 2004. It was cool. I, I, they lost me Palace when they got grounded or something and they were no longer flying. I really, I wish they would make some science fiction shows or just fucking space battles. Space Above and Beyond, is that, is that it? Above and Beyond? That one was pretty badass. I think that's what it was called. Uh, just more space battles. Lots of space battles. Space pajamas. There you go. 
Stephen had a great time at Orange's Fair this, uh, this uh, weekend. Next count, game home. Very good. Good to see you back in one piece, tabletop. <clears throat> now what's the top hat? Yeah, they're coming back around, man. They're coming back around. The sound vest, I can handle the collar they mucked up. See, I kind of like the collar. It's kind of interesting. Kind of interesting. <clears throat> of course, I like anything that's a little bit different. And these folks are going to have to be a little bit different. I really think, uh, I don't know, they should go with the whole padded, you know, whatever. There's a lot of, there's a lot of good examples out there for, for, good, for good uniforms. Makes me want to go to ranger school so that I can be a space ranger. <laughs> Man, they got to have rangers now in the space force. That's absolutely necessary. <laughs> I think there needs to be a book of mutant powers where A, it would work for a Gamma World type game. Or if there is a book, there's the book of powers. Or if someone wanted to run a comic book superheroes type game. And there's a book of powers. Uh, David, ask no further. There's a book of powers for Amazing Adventures. Uh, we sell it now. And uh, very, very soon, we will be overhauling that line as well. And the second printing is about sold out. Uh, and, they, and Jason and I, that's part of the whole going forward thing once we've done these Kickstarters. Uh, and uh, Jason and I have been talking about that. I know he's already started kind of fixing things that he's wanted to fix for a while now. I think the Navy dress is white, okay, so they don't have blue. So the Marines have like a blue khaki pants and blue jacket, is that right? And the, the Army's blue and blue, uh, and the Air Force is blue and blue? I can't remember. It's been too long. I like that series from 9596 called Space Above and Beyond. Yes, Willie, we're talking about that exact same thing. Universe of Combat Suits were look practical and gritty. Yeah, I love that TV show. It was a very good show, filled with action. Uh, just It was just very cool. And maybe depends on the rank. All right, there you go on the dress. Uh, I'm guessing, Matt, that you were in the, you were in the Navy at one point. B5 had some good space battles. It did. It had some badass stuff. And I loved uh, I loved the launch pads. There's just some good stuff in it. Uh, Navy does have dress whites, dress blues, and, and mess dress. There you go. So it's a whole bunch. That's right, tabletop. You were in the Navy. Yep, like above and beyond. Just a good show. Space above and beyond was great. I thought it deserved second. It did deserve more. Someone needs. That's what we need to do. We need to start one of these campaigns for Netflix to pick up that property. I think it was a comic book, but I don't know if the comic book came before the show. Um, that was just bad. It was just a good show. Maybe that here, E6, and below, dress blue is the Cracker Jack uniform. There you go. Now we've got it, <laughs> we, we've got it from the authority. Uh, actually, I have to say, I love all of the, the, service, the service dress uniforms. They look badass. And I like the Army's new uniform. I don't know if they deployed it yet, but they're kind of going back to a 1940s look. I, 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 they just look badass in the 40s, so bring it back. Uh, but Fox hated Fireflow, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Fox really not, not hitting well with the sci-fi. <laughs> not hitting well with the sci-fi at all, because literally Firefly might be, in my, and it's all subjective, obviously, might be the best science fiction TV show ever made. Uh, it was just insanely watchable insanely watchable. Need to have a TTRPG X-Files setting set in the 40s and 50s where the humans attempt to stop the aliens and govern alliance. We've talked about that, Matt. That would be a great, a great amazing adventure supplement. Uh, I'm a huge X-Files fan and I love the whole, I love the whole idea and I'm not sold on it not being true, the whole idea of this giant conspiracy, you know, uh, to, to manipulate things. I just think it's very cool. I doubt it. I've worked for the government and the state government. I, I just I have little faith in conspiracies, but maybe that's part of the conspiracy. If you ever get a chance, that the anime named Legend of Galactic Heroes is epic space opera and constant space battles has some whining characters. That are <laughs> well, if the battles are good enough, I could look it over. You know, I guess the the ultimate whiny character that redeems himself and makes that and makes the character watchable is Hudson from Aliens, because he's belly aching through the whole damn show and whole damn movie. But uh, in the end, of course, he turns out to be the badass of badassers. Uh, man, I was just ashamed that actor died. Uh, I love the new un army uniform. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm jammed on that. That was very cool. Dress blues, inspections coming up this month. Well, there you go. <laughs> have fun with that. That's not something I have to worry about anymore. If you could do any licensed property as an RPG, which would you want to do? Um, probably, honestly, Firefly. Uh, Firefly, I think, has the elements. They Who, who made that? Josh Whedon? Was it Josh Whedon? Um, it has the elements of everything in it from uh, from gritty to opera to from fantasy to sci-fi. Firefly really is just it's brilliantly done uh, as, as basically a, a western in space without it being a western in space. So probably Firefly would really be up, way up on the top of that list. Babylon 5 looks to be coming back with JMS at the helm. Not calling it a reboot. We'll see. 
You never know. Sometimes they turn out pretty good. You just never know. Stephen Firefly is a traveler ripped off. May agree? <laughs> the thing about traveler for me. Now I played it a little bit differently. Maybe it always had this this military aspect to it that I loved. Now when I played, I didn't play traveler a lot, but um, I lo I love the concept of building your character and dying before you even play. You know, and then you got to make another one. Uh, this is your career. I thought that was really unique and very cool. Uh, and gave you a subset of skills that made sense, you know, in the game context, which is very, very cool. Uh, but I can easily, I can easily see there's probably the elements, the roots. You know, interestingly enough, Jay, when Gary died away, of course, when Gary died away, when Gary passed away, uh, we were working very closely with him. You know, I was his publisher. Gary and I were friends. Uh, and when he died, I started getting lots of phone calls, lots and lots of phone calls that day from from press, from all over the place. And the strangest phone call I got was from, I don't can't remember his name now, but the, one of the VPs over at Sony Entertainment. They called, uh, he called, this fellow called, and he was in tears, uh, very emotional, and he talked about, uh, he said all of this, at one point in the conversation, we talked for a while, he said all of these games over here at Sony, all of this stuff, Gary started all of this. And he said it was his inspiration that led to all of these games and his designers and doing all this stuff. It was this really cool conversation uh, and this very nice tip of the hat from someone whose industry is multi-billion, com you know, compared to someone whose industry is not multi-billion, maybe now, but, but uh, no, I thought that was, that was very cool. And I think that if you look at things like Firefly uh, and so many of these things, um, they've definitely got, they can trace some of their roots, minimally some of their roots, into this hobby that Gary created and that all of those guys at TSR created, and Darlene, girls too, everybody. And it was created that has since kind of propelled all of us forward into these, you know, brave new horizons and all that. So there's probably some truth, some truth to what you're saying, uh, saying here, Jay. Uh, yeah, I bon I bon because I absolutely love Firefly. It's, it, it captured for me uh, the Captain Mal, actually all of the characters, but Mal is, he's the perfect John Wayne in space type character. That scene where he kicks the dude in the engine and kills him and then he goes to the next dude. It's just this ultimate scene. Uh, and I like characters like that. I like decisive characters. I don't like... So take one of my favorite TV shows of all time is Walking Dead. I love that show. But Rick Grimes, who is my favorite character in The Walking Dead, they frequently have his, his character... Once is okay, but they've done it three or four times where he has this complete kind of mental emotional breakdown and has to rebuild himself. And you know, once is good for the thematic elements, but beyond that, it's not. And that's what I kind of liked about the Mal character. He doesn't he doesn't doubt, uh, and and that's very cool. Even when there's all chaos around him, so I, I love that aspect to it. But I also love the aspect that uh, it's science. It's you got your science fiction. You know, you got your spaceship flying through space and doing whatever the hell it's doing, and then you land and they got a herd cattle at one point. I just thought that was cool. It was, just, and, he, and he merged it with out it and made it seem realistic. You can't take the Star Wars universe or the Star Trek universe and do that, right? Because it's too orderly, it's too organized, it's too central control over everything. But in, in Whedon's take of the, of the settling of the solar system, very much like The Expanse, uh, it's not settled. The, the, the power brokers are not settled, which I, I really like. Josh Whedon never came up with an original idea. <laughs> Jay, I am, I am gathering you're not a huge fan of Josh Whedon. That is really funny. Uh, I, I will tell you this. I, I thoroughly enjoy Firefly, uh, but his Avengers movies, I can take or leave. So it just, the first one's kind of cool, but that's about it. I thought about something similar. Looking at the, at, at the Grays in a monster book has made me have ideas. Yeah, it's, be, it's very cool. I love the whole concept behind the, the, the alien conspiracy. I really wish that the X Files, that Chris Carter is that who did that, had had stayed stayed the course. Now he may have always intended to have it being kind of a human thing, but it should have been a, it should have been an alien thing all the way from season one to eleven. I think that would have been very cool. Uh, I loved it when I was single and we had a, a formal dining out. Those dress blues were a very a girl magnet. I'll bet they were. They look good. They just look good. Everyone likes more hair, don't they? <laughs> you don't think so? Game over, man. Yep, absolutely. Let's bug out and call it even, man. <laughs> that dude, Hudson is the ultimate character. I love it. That's not my favorite character in that show. Ripley holds that that role, but and followed by um, not Riggs. Riggs is from Lethal Weapon. Who's Michael Bean's character? Ah, oh, Jesus. Uh, I can't remember anything. Everyone is a bit fucked. <laughs> 
da, 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 Mandalorian. I haven't, wa you know, I watched the first couple of episodes, and I gotta say, and this is a horrible, horrible thing to say. It's it's well done. It's good. It's a good show. I'm sure it's fantastic. But but my tiny, my tiny pea brain. He never took the helmet off. Now I know that's part of the mythology, but he, he just wouldn't take the helmet off, and it began to bug me because you know I've worn a helmet and it's hot and it's sweaty and it's your scalp starts getting kicked up. <laughs> And unless he's got some kind of medicinal quality than a helmet, uh, it just began to bug me. I don't know why. So I, I kind of dropped the show. I need to go back and watch it again. Though I canceled Disney, so I can't. <laughs> I stop paying the Disney thing. So, But it, what I saw was really cool, aside from the helmet. I don't know why that bugged me. It was very weird. It was one of those weird things. Sometimes I'm watching a show, and for whatever weird-ass reason, my suspension of disbelief, which is huge, I can take a lot, breaks, and I'm out. I just can't do it. I don't know why. And that, <laughs> that was one of them. I think I'm doing a sci-fi western game with Star Siege based on my own writings. That would be badass. When, without being a western in space, ignoring the episode where they move a, a, a herd of cows. <laughs> uh, is, is O'Mallory still out there? Let's see, I was at the Fort Hood as well. Oh, no, okay, you're, you're, you're talking a real long shot. I always wanted to hear, hear or flesh out this, the Shepherd's backstory and fly her. That character has so much potential. Yeah, it's a great character. Uh, I was there 06 and 11, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I thought Firefly was very well done. Just my opinion on Whedon. Loved Buffy, too. Just I guess it was tough to be original. You know, at a certain point, i got to tell you, Jay, and you and I, I think, are the same age. Uh, so this is, I've told this story before, but years ago, when Terminator came out, the first one, um, I watched the movies, loved it, blah, 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 blah. And then, like, a year later, we get it on video. I guess I rented it or something. I don't know, whatever. in hell. I sat down with my dad to watch it, and... And I remember the scene where the car, he didn't say much, and, and he enjoyed movies. Uh, he really liked the Naked Gun movies. <laughs> he liked satire. But uh, when the scene with the car hits the wall, I guess, and, and the cops get out and they've escaped or whatever the hell, he looked at me and goes, so he's the mother of John Car Carner, Connor, whoever the character is. And I looked at him and said, yes, damn it, how'd you figure that out? And he goes, uh, and he got up and walked away. And he, didn't, he never finished the movie, and it was funny. And since then, I've come to realize that there's so, so many of the movies and the TV shows, forget the idea of a reboot. It's kind of the same thing thematically over and over again. And it's one reason I get drawn to shows that are just weird, that are just strange, bizarre uh, stuff that I haven't seen before. And, and you'll see me talking about just absolutely weird shit. The, the weirdest thing I've watched lately is three, three hours and 40 minutes of a video game's play and a little... Little Nightmares too. Go check it out. I'll put it up on the blog after the stream. It is it is really cool, but it's it's different uh, because there's and so much stuff is kind of redone. Killing in Harker Heights blew up in size. Gerbs did a prisoner book that was an excellent source. Da -da 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 -da. I'm way behind. Uh, da -da 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 -da. The dog that was in the chair beside me during our game. Mal, my girlfriend's dog. She's a huge fire. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, always good to have the dog watching the show. Driving past the agent on 35. Uh, let's see, if you want to get out of the way, you need to go uh, all the way to Nolanville. Da -da 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 -da. After Firefly, Nathan Dillon was in the Castle series. They did a Halloween episode where he dressed in his Captain Mal costume. His TV daughter teased him about no space cowboys. <laughs> That's very cool. I'd heard that there was a little bit of crossover. I've never watched Castle. I need to check that out. Uh, let's see, go to the movie around. Let's go around. It's the wife's turn to pick. I uh, though wish we'd be love going to see Dear Evan Hansen. <laughs> you never know. It might be good. Hard to remember everything after a thousand years. very hard after a thousand years. <laughs> I was just sitting there this morning. I don't know what I was thinking about. I was thinking, man, I've been alive a long time. <laughs> it's really funny. My grandmother was like 96 when she passed away. And it took her like three weeks to, to actually cross over. She just, you know, slowly went away. I remember at one point she looked over and my brother and I were sitting there. And she goes, how, how long is this going to take? This is taking forever. It was really funny. <laughs> she, she went out with some good with some good humor, which is, you know, the best way to go, I suppose. Hicks, yes, that's who it is. Hicks, getting my movies all <laughs> rigs and I got rigs in space now. I got a lethal weapon in space. That's predictable. It's <laughs> well, like Kevin. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the thing. So many of these movies. I watched something not very long ago. I posted it on the blog. Uh, I strongly recommend this movie. It is. I had to to rent it on Apple. Shit, uh, it's called something about a gun for hire. Damn, we've been posting so much shit on the blog, I'll never find it. Um, but uh, it was original. It had something very different. It had a nice twist at the end. I, went, I didn't see it coming. Die in a gunfight. 
So go check out Die in a Gunfight. It's basically Romeo and Juliet kind of redone, and it had some really cool stuff in it. It had one of the best chance encounters between two characters I have ever seen, hands down. Love the movie. I give it a five. Five butter sticks on the, on the blog. So Die in a Gunfight, check that sucker out. Uh, it's very different. Actually, it's very... You, it, everything's very familiar, but the, the twist is just different. I like it. Greasy can't watch Cop Doctor or Lawyer shows because they are, they're just way too much. I can't do any of them. Um, NCIS. And they're good. I don't want to take away from any of those shows and people who enjoy them because I know people do. Um, but all of them, they're kind of they're kind of the same thing uh, over and over again. The, the Lawyer shows, all of them. There's, there's with a few gems that pop out, you know, episodes that pop out. Um, it's, the Walking Dead's kind of fallen into that a little bit as much as I love that show. We've now gone through the governor and someone in the middle of the Negan. So we're kind of going through this this this, this human war stuff, which is cool, but uh, I don't know. A breakout. A breakout of the mold. Uh, there's an episode just before, I don't want to give you spoilers, but there's an episode where they go to Washington to, to retrieve these wagons so they could learn how to build wagons because they're running out of fuel, obviously. And I thought that was one of the most creative episodes I had seen because... There, it's it's a whole episode that doesn't have to do with any of this other bullshit. It's just people surviving and how are you going to survive in a post-apocalyptic world, um, which I think is I think is infinitely more interesting than listening to people arguing all that. Negan is a changed man. I gotta say, I gotta say, since Angela Kang, so The Walking Dead, eleven seasons in, two other series, uh, the showrunner Angela Kang took back over season nine, I think, and they have been exemplary episodes. And I gotta tell you. Uh, for my money, season 11, I'm only on episode 3 of season 11. I just finished it the other night. It is great. A. It is fantastic television. I have enjoyed every minute of it and been stunned when the show was suddenly ended. Uh, I'm pretty burned out on the TV movies. It's just the same old, same old. I'm oh, preachy as all I can get out. Yeah, and that's that. I can't do preachy. I will frequently just turn a show off unless I'm watching it with my wife and she's you know, kind of invested in the show, vested in the show, not invested in the show, but invested in the show. I'll just turn it off. I'll turn it off walk away. I have no interest. Uh, if it's really important to the story, okay, but uh, I just don't have any interest in it. I, I follow the news. I, I keep myself well informed. I, I know what's going on out in the world. I don't need it in the television. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> I really need that TV to be somewhere it's not. Uh, it's one reason I really like revenge flicks because revenge flicks are just... Person X got hurt. Person X kills everybody else. <laughs> that, that I can get into. It's very simple. British cop shows are a bit more entertaining because they have no uh, compunction about killing main characters. Uh, I've not watched many of them. I will say this. I am watching... Shit. Uh, Tim, what's it called? It's the Steve Martin, Marty Short show. Um, and it's got the young uh, Selena Gomez. And it's... What the hell is that thing called? Only Murders in the Building. It's on Hulu. Holy shit. Check it out. It is fantastic. Yeah, only only murders in the building. It is absolutely fantastic. And I'm a gigantic Steve Martin fan. The dude can play the banjo like nobody's business. I have been, I've seen his folk group singing. Uh, Steve Martin is just gold. And and uh, Marty Short with his Martin Short with his um, his Jiminy Jiminy Glick character, gold. Uh, and I gotta tell you, I, I didn't even know who Selena Gomez was. I knew she was a singer or whatever. You know, but it hadn't followed me. I don't read much of the gossip stuff because I don't not because I'm special but I don't want that to spoil my TV shows and music I don't want to know that they're actual people I just want to know that they make cool shows but um, but Selena Gomez is absolutely captivating in this TV show she plays this kind of meek not meek character that's really cool um, check it out I mean it is fantastic and I gotta say this I, I, I like to say this publicly you know because it won't do any good anywhere but I watch so many TV shows, of which The Walking Dead is at the top of the list, where I can't understand half of what these users are saying. They, they mumble, it's part of their affectation, and I, they're not speaking into the... Oh, they don't use boom mics, I don't know what the hell's going on in Hollywood. But, they, but I don't know, I can't hear half of it. Maybe I'm getting old, I don't know. But watching that No Murders in the Building, Only Murders in the Building, Steve Martin and Martin Short speak beautifully. I can hear every word they say, I can understand every word they say, uh, they enunciate. <laughs> They're clearly trained how to do this uh, and how to act without mumble. I don't know. It's just a pet peeve of mine. <laughs> the only cop shows I ever really got into were about the beat cops and the weird stuff that they see on the streets, but those are far and few. Southland was probably the best. Yeah, when there, there was a... 
Hill Street Blues, that's one of those. I think that was a good one from way back in the day. Selena Gomez is really good in this. Yeah, I didn't know anything about her either, but enjoy her. Act. Yeah, I mean, she's just, she's captivating. It's really cool. Uh, and I like to see someone cross-pollinate from a genre. Is that right? She's a musician, and she comes over, and she's really good at acting. Uh, you know, Jewel, I saw Jewel in one of my favorite movies. Um, she didn't get right. Ride of the Devil. If you've ever, if you want a great Civil War movie, Ride of the Devil is it. Watch that one. Uh, American Civil War, and um, and Jewel plays a role in it, and she's absolutely perfect. She's fantastic in that movie, uh, but she never went on. She, she hated it. She didn't do any other movie. I usually have captions on these days, so I know for sure what they say. I have to about half the time. Poor Faxer, I have to turn the captions on. I watched uh, the hell did I watched last night. Um, the Bad Batch, a movie, pretty cool. Some kind of prison in the desert. This young lady gets tossed in the prison. Some cannibals eat her arm and leg, and and she her survival after that. But a lot of it is, there's, they're mumbling. I don't know what the hell they're saying. So I have to turn captions off. <laughs> it's quite irritating because I don't like, I can do captions in a, in a you know, a, a foreign movie or a foreign TV show. That's fine. My brain's wired for it. But if they're speaking English, I'm, I'm torn between watching and reading. And it just, it, it breaks that suspension or whatever, whatever idiocy rolls around in my head. We usually link our phone to earbuds to the TV so we can hear, oh, that was actually a good idea. That's a very good idea. Because you just, you can't hear anything. That's a very good idea. Uh, Ride of the Devil is one of the most historically accurate period movies. A good, it, is fan, it is a fantastic movie. It's got that great line when, uh, what's his name, pulls the pistol on the, the bad guy and says, uh, or he has his rifle, I guess he pulls his rifle out and says, uh, when do you want to kill me? Is now, is, now the, is now the good time? Because it's a good time for me or something like that. It's just a great line. It's a fantastic line. Ironically, Apple TV doesn't link to our Apple here. <laughs> Apple is almost irritating. <laughs> My wife's office uses Macs, iMacs, uh, and she just had to get, she's had really old computers, so she can really get all these new computers, and none of them have USB ports, so they can't plug anything into them. I, I get you want to be futuristic, but come on. Come on. Uh, let's see. Uh, thank you all for showing up. Oh, is it? Holy shit, it's up. Holy crap. Did we do the raffle? Did someone win? Uh, I didn't even realize it was five. Yeah, do, 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 do. <laughs> good God. I love this stream. All right. Yeah, well, thank you. Okay, all is good. Well, thank you, everybody, for showing up. It is after 5 o'clock. we got to get some food. Uh, and I know Tim's got to walk his dog, so uh, we're going to get out of here. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, I absolutely love hanging out with you guys. Uh, this is a, a, a nice peak in my week. So uh, you all have a great rest of your week, and have a good weekend, too. And we will see you on Thursday for GM's Tricks of the Trade. It's on Trade just... Could just go by my time. Stay after five. Yeah, yeah. I might, I might waste away from, from starving. <laughs> All right, everybody. Take care. Y'all have a good evening.